at the start of the month. I invited you to ask me any questions on my YouTube channel and my Instagram. I'll attempt to answer them all in this video. Let's start with the ones from YouTube. Alex Ng asks, how big is your collection at the moment? Do you have a collection size target? Which is your favorite piece in each category? Diver, daily, beater, dress. Which brands and models are you looking outside of Rolex and Tudor? I currently have more than 10 watches in my collection. And honestly, I think my collection is getting too big as I don't get to fully experience all my watches. My ideal collection size target is 7 pieces, one to wear on my wrist while the rest of the six can fill my watch box. I would also have enough watches to rotate throughout the week. I don't categorize my watches in my collection, but to answer your question, my favorite diver is my Black Bay 58. I like the vintage style aluminium bezel insert, a well proportioned case, as well as the value for money that the watch offers. My favorite daily is my 36mm Explorer. I like that it is a Rolex, but at the same time, it flies under the radar so I feel comfortable wearing it out and about in London. My favorite beater used to be my Black Bay 58, but since I got my Moons watches, they have become my beaters. I don't have a proper dress watch, but if I have to pick one from my collection, I would say my favorite is this two-tone Datejust 36. Cesar Garcia asks, do you think that in the near future, we are going to be able to buy at retail at our AD? Basically observing the whole global financial scenario, who knows? This is an excellent question, but a difficult one to answer. Under the current economic backdrop, where companies are cutting jobs, consumers are facing higher cost of living, and with the collapse of the crypto markets to name a few, there is no doubt that the demand of luxury goods like watches will fall at least for the average Joe. And because fewer people are willing to spend money on luxury watches now, you are more likely to be able to offer a watch from your AD. But you also got to think about who are the regular clients who usually get the AD calls in the first place. They are typically those who have a big spend history, and in my view, they are either flippers or high net worth individuals with a lot of disposable income. I don't think the spending power of high net worth individual would change materially because watches probably represent a very small portion of their wealth. On the other hand, flippers are probably negatively impacted more by the current crisis as they have limited working capital and rely on quick turnarounds to maintain their cash flow. So if you believe the end clients are mainly flippers, then yes, I think it would be easier to get a watch from an AD. But if you believe that the end clients are mainly high net worth individuals, then no, I don't think it will get easier. I assume you are referring to Rolex and Patek Philippe here. The other point to note is that they are not public companies. Rolex and Patek Philippe have full control on how they want to run the company without pressure from external shareholders. This means that they can protect their brand by reducing production. If Rolex and PP scale back on production, then I don't think it will be easier to get a watch from an AD. Hyung Kim asks, I'm looking for the one watch that is versatile that I'll be purchasing in a few months. I'm certain that it will be a Tudor. In your amazing collection of Tudors and others, which is your absolute favorite? Is it your most versatile watch? Wear it for any and all occasions. What other brands or models do you think will be joining your collection? Thanks for the great content. Thanks, Hayoung, and congrats on deciding to go with Tudor. It is one of my favorite brands, and I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with it. My favorite watch in my collection is my Black Bay 58, but it is not my most versatile watch, though. My Explorer is. I think when Tudor eventually upgrades its Black Bay 36 with the in house movement, I may then add that to my collection, and it will be my most versatile watch. As to what other brands I might explore outside of Rolex, Tudor, and Omega, I think it will be a Grand Seiko. I really like the spring drive movement, and Grand Seiko makes some of the best styles at its price point. I wish Grand Seiko can offer a smaller case size and improve on the bracelet design though, and when they do, 
and I add one to my collection. The next question is from SC. He is one of my earliest supporters. He also runs a watch channel mainly focusing on Rolex. Go check out his channel if you haven't done so already. As he said, great questions so far. My question, Tudor made some great strides recently with their new releases. Going forward, what are the top two things Tudor should do to improve their build quality or design of their existing watches? Looking forward to the video. First, from a build quality perspective, I think Tudor should go back to basic and focus on delivering the promises that they made to their customers. A good example is the Black Bay 58925. In the commercial, Tudor mentioned that the silver is stable, but there have been multiple reports from the watch community that the silver does tarnish, and it causes quite a bit of disappointment for some buyers. Second, from a design perspective, I think Tudor should improve on their movements decoration on the watches that have an open case back. This includes the Black Bay 58925 as well as the Black Bay 58 Gold. I would expect a £13,000 watch to have a nicer movement decoration than what we get here. Finally, I would love to see Tudor offering the same watch in different case sizes, similar to what they have for the Black Bay 32, 36, 41 models. Had Tudor offered the Pepsi GMT in a smaller case, I may have bought one already. The next question is from BB. Everyone's collection journey is different, but one thing is almost universal in that tastes change to greater or lesser degrees. Mine are moving towards dressier pieces like the Reversal and Tank, and I have played with the idea of precious metal. What direction do you see yourself going in? This is a great question. There are two directions that I see myself moving towards. First is going down in size. I still remember my first serious watch being a Breitling Chronomat Evolution. It is a 44mm watch and it is over 15mm thick. As I learn more about watches, my taste has changed and I realize I can't really pull it off on my 6 inch wrist. I ended up selling my very first serious watch. I have moved on to smaller watches these days and think 36 to 39mm is my sweet spot. The other direction I'm taking is to try out different metals. I used to only buy stainless steel watches, but I have recently explored bronze, gold, and even plastic. I would really like to experience titanium one day too. Sam Tran asks, which one is your favorite Black Bay 58 if you can only keep one? For those who don't know, I have three Black Bay 58. I have the OG, the Blue Bay, as well as the Bronze Bay. My favorite one out of the three is the Bronze Bay because it is so special to me. It can only be bought at a handful of Tudor boutiques and it has now developed a nice patina which makes this very personal to me. But since you said I can only keep one, I must say that the OG Black Bay 58 is the one that I would keep. As much as I love my Bronze Bay 58, it is just not as versatile as the black version. Scott T asks, I am really starting to feel the need for the perfect Cartier for me. I am leaning towards the Tank American. Have you researched your favorite? Hey Scott, I must admit that I haven't really looked into Cartier too much. I am not a fan of their case design, their bracelet, their everything. I guess I can say that I have researched Cartier enough to decide that it is not a brand for me. The Tank is a pretty cool watch. But if I'm going for that design language, I think I'll go for the JLC reversal instead. Now, let's move on to the questions from Instagram. BlackBob1977 asked, What is the main sense of life? It is different for everyone, of course. I would say YOLO your life savings in crypto, and when it gets to the bottom, and when you've got nothing left, you may find the main sense of your life. Disclaimer, this is not financial advice. Watch Orlando ask, Inheritance watch, Langer, Sassonia, or Rolex Sermit? If only had you gave me PP as an option. I mean, their marketing says it all, but between Sassonia and the Sermit, I would say Langer. There is just something really classy about this German watch brand, 
and it also gives out a more mature vibe. So I think it will be a great watch to pass down to the next generation. Also, because the valuation in the secondary market is lower on the Langer, it is less likely that your son or daughter will sell it for a quick buck. The next one is from HeyTM.HLK, best watch under $600. Hands down the Seiko 5 Sports GMT, and you would have $100 US in change to buy a nice strap to go with it. But if you don't care for the GMT function and the bicolor bezel, you can even go for the Seiko 5 Sports. I picked mine up for $220, so you can buy a moon swatch with the spare cash. Ashan asks, Rolex Datejust or Oyster Perpetual, 36mm on both. For me, it would be the Datejust 36 and more specifically, one with a fluter bezel and a jubilee bracelet. I love the light play on the fluter bezel, and there is honestly nothing out there that can compete with the fluter bezel in my opinion. I also found the jubilee bracelet much more comfortable than the oyster bracelet. Plus, you get a date complication with the dejas which you don't get on the oyster perpetual. Shriki Yani asks, Worth starting a collection with Tiso or Hamilton? or shoot straight to Omega or Tudor. He also asked, what is the best Tudor product? It sounds like you already have Tudor and Omega in mind, and you are only using Tissot and Hamilton as a stepping stone. I would go straight to Omega and Tudor. Granted, that is a big step up in price, but I think it is totally worth it. I think once you have moved on to the Tudor and Omega price point, you might find yourself not wanting to put on the Tissot or Hamilton anymore. So I would rather save up and go straight to Tudor and Omega in this case. In terms of the best Tudor products, I presume you are talking about watches. I would say that the Pilagos 39, the Black Bay 58, and the Black Bay 36 are all great options. And if you are referring to non-watch products, I would say their fabric strap is great. I love that the strap uses a single pass system so it doesn't add too much to the thickness, and it is by far the best strap I've ever used. FU179.9 asked, Does the Black Bay 58 bronze patina pollute white shirt? Would the sweat flow through bronze bracelets become black too? No, not from my personal experience. The bronze doesn't stain my white shirt, but it can make your wrist turn green when you sweat a lot. And no, my sweat didn't turn black either. Mr. H96 asks, 114060 versus Omega Seamaster Nicton. I would go for the Rolex Mariner. It means a lot to me because it is my wedding watch. I do like the satin finish on the bezel on the Nicton, but I do not appreciate the closed case back. Out of all the Seamaster Diver 300M models out there, I would go for the white dial if I have to pick one. There you have it. These are all your questions answered. Hope you have enjoyed this long form video. I suggest you to check out this video where I offer 5 tips to help you buy a Rolex from an AD. I also gave you my real life examples on how it worked on me. Cheers.